Let's get into the word. There's a lot we got to get to. And I need your prayers. Let's pray. We'll read it and then we'll see what God, we'll see what God's going to do. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I need you, man. As usual, I can't do anything without you. So, Father, I pray now give me clarity of mind, give me concision of speech and conviction of heart to preach what your word says. Father, anything you have me to say, bring it to mind, and anything you don't have me to say, remove it from my mind. Father, I put my trust in you, Father, that your word will fall on good ground. And I pray, Lord, that uh, as your word goes forth, Father, that uh, your people will take your word and run with it. And Lord, let us draw, let us uh, get stronger, let us grow stronger. And Father, let us continue to draw close to you at the preaching of your word. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Have your way in this place. We love you, we thank you, and we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Let the church say amen. 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 All right. Um, this is uh, 1 John. Oh, did I tell you all the chapter of verse? I just said 1 John. 1 John chapter 2. I'm sorry. I'm trying to figure out why y'all looking at me. 1 John chapter 2, verses 18. And we're going to go all the way to 29. Now, when, as we're going through this, don't get scared. Don't worry. We'll be all right. But 1 John chapter 2, verses 18 through 29. 1 John chapter 2, verses 18 through 29. And it reads like this. Children, it is the last hour. And you have heard that the that Antichrist is coming. So now many Antichrists have come. Therefore, we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that it might become plain that they all are not of us. But you have been anointed by the Holy One, and you all have knowledge. I write to you not because you do not know the truth, but because you know it, and because no lie is of the truth. Who is the liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? This is the Antichrist, he who denies the Father and the Son. No one who denies the Son has the Father, and whoever confesses the Son has the Father also. Let what you heard from the beginning abide in you. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, then you too will abide in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he made to us, eternal life. I write these things to you about those who are trying to deceive you. But the anointing that you receive from him abides in you. And you have no need that anyone should teach you. But, at, but as his anointing teaches you about everything, and it's true and is no lie, just as it has taught you, abide in him. It's a lot. I'm going to do my best to go briefly through it. But I want to preach from this text. The spirit of the Antichrist. Yep, we're going there today. The spirit of the Antichrist. And I know the Antichrist may seem like the boogeyman to the Christians, but let it be clear, he is not. He's already a defeated foe. Don't worry, we'll get into all of that. Are y'all with me? Amen. Amen. All right. Help me go. Sometime around March, uh, sometime around April, this country, uni uh, this country universally agreed, and I kind of disagree, but it ain't up to me, to participate in what we all know as daylight savings. In March, we turn our clocks ahead and lose an hour. But in November, we turn our clocks back to gain an hour. Uh, daylight savings time uh, was put in place uh, in an effort to attempt to literally save daylight. To, to preserve daylight as long as possible. To literally, if you will, hold on to the day as much as we can. Pastor, why are you bringing up daylight savings time? I don't see how this has anything to do with the Antichrist. Well, let me tell you why. Because no matter how many times we try to preserve time, time will always continue to move forward. People always say, you have all the time in the world, but the more time you have is the more time we take. The time is something cannot be stopped. You cannot ask for a time out. You cannot cease time so that you can catch up. Time is a luxury that none of us have. Time is going forward. No matter how many times you sell time, can you hold on for a minute? Let me 
catch my breath. Time says I already wasted five seconds while you were talking. Time does not know how to stop. And, and the truth of the matter is, and you watch me, here's where we get, here's where things get important. And if there is anybody that understands the brevity of time and has taken full advantage of time, it's the devil. The devil understands. And let me be clear. I do not wish to give the devil any, any credit in any way, shape, or form in anything that he does. He is a liar, he's an accuser, and he has already lost the victory because of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. However, if there is anything that the devil has understood that the world is ignorant of and the body of Christ has been slow to understand, it's time. Yup, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do my best. Help me, Holy Spirit. The devil understands how much time he has. Are y'all hearing me? Right. The devil understands that time is winding up. The devil understands that time is not a luxury he can afford to waste. Pastor, why are you bringing this up? I'm in the text. John says in 1 John chapter 2, verse 18, he said that we are in the last hour. Yeah. I know y'all weren't expecting an end times message today, but y'all won't get it. <laughs> What we are in, what is the last hour, Pastor? Please bear with me because this is important. The last hour is the end of this age and the coming of Jesus' return. Mm. We are in, if you will, right now, the pending moments of Christ's return. Mm. This is going to be hard for us to get, but let it be clear. Jesus can come by the time I finish this sentence or by the time my sermon is over. We are in, and I want hear me, I want you to sense the urgency here. We are very near the end of this age and the return of Christ. And if I may, let me just uh, take time to say this, because you've got to get this in where you can. I pray that everyone knows where their salvation lies. I pray that everyone knows who Jesus is. Because whether you uh, agree with God or not, we all have an eternity to spend. Yeah. Whether it's in heaven or in hell, we all have an eternity yeah. after this life. There is another life. And so before I continue with my message, and I'm going to try and move fast. Because I got a lot to get through, but I want to move fast and I don't want to bore you. But, 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 but my prayer is that, that you know Jesus as your Savior. Yeah. And because we are in the last hour, don't waste time. If you have backslidden and you are not walking with Christ as you should, don't waste time. Run to the cross now. Yeah, yeah. Why? John says we are in the last hour. Mm. But, how, but how do we know we are in the last hour? Well, here's where things get, here's where the Antichrist comes in. John says we are in the last hour because the spirit of the Antichrist. That word antichrist, it's like, the, like I said, like the boogeyman of like the Christian walk, the antichrist. It's like, who is big? Now, some of you are saying, Pastor, give me some knowledge. Who's the antichrist? What is the antichrist? What are we dealing with? The antichrist is exactly what he sounds like. He is antichrist. The antichrist is the demonic being powered by Satan who opposes everything that Jesus is for and seeks to exalt himself above Jesus to deceive the world. Let me say it again. The Antichrist is a demonic being powered by Satan who opposes everything that Jesus is for and seeks to exalt himself above Jesus to deceive the world. The Bible says that before Jesus is returned, well, remember we're in the last hour. The Bible says before Jesus is returned, we will see a, a, a person that will come and be the Antichrist. He will, and he will attempt to imitate the coming of Jesus. He will have a grand entrance like Jesus, uh, except, uh, 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 if you will, something will happen that will make him look divine. He will do, watch this, this is, this is where it, it gets crazy, Brother Chris. This Antichrist in the last days, and again, we are in the last hour, he will come and do false miracles, signs, and wonders. And the Bible says, will fool even maybe the elect. Do I have your attention? Yes. He is essentially a pretend Jesus, a fake Jesus, a wannabe 
Savior, and he will do this, all to deceive and turn people away. Now, I don't say this because you're going to be afraid. No, I don't want you to be afraid because we've already won the victory over the Antichrist. We simply just don't need to be fooled. Now, some of you say, Pastor, well, what if this man claims to be Jesus? If this man claims to be Jesus and you're still here on this earth, then clearly it's not him. Because we would have seen the real Jesus by the time, if, the real Jesus, if he was in front of us. Are you hearing me? If he's the real Jesus, I'm in heaven. Are y'all with me? Yes, sir. That makes sense. Let me just want to make that clear. So, Pastor, I'm going to be deceived. No, 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 you're not going to be deceived. Because if that man is really Jesus, we would be, we would be no longer in our flesh, but in our new bodies. Yes, Amen? Yeah. All right, moving on. But why do we bring this up? I, I, I tell you this because, watch this. Just like the Antichrist will come before Jesus' return to deceive, here it is, we will see the spirit of the Antichrist alive right now to deceive the people of God until Christ returns. John says in verse 18, we know we are in the last hour because the spirit of the Antichrist is coming. What is the spirit of the Antichrist? Point blank period. There are a whole lot. Watch me now. False preachers. I got to teach you this, man. I, I know this is, this is hard, but can I, are y'all with me? A lot of false preachers, a lot of false teachers, a lot of false prophets that are going to be coming in the world. I am not saying this to bring anybody else down or come for anybody's ministry. I'm just telling you what the book says, that in this last hour, there will be, watch me, there will be false preachers with podcasts. Come on. There will be false prophets with YouTube channels. There will be false teachers with TikToks yeah. who are giving you all types of information. And in this last hour, they are going to be giving you false doctrines to yeah. pull you away from Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Watch me. The same way that the same way that, that Jesus sends out missionaries is the same way that Satan will send out the spirit of the Antichrist. Yes, sir. And as we get closer to the end, to the return of Christ, these people will come more prevalent. Yes, they will. And people watch me, and I'm getting ahead of myself. But we will, but people will begin to believe them just because of how many followers they have. That's right. Yeah, that's people right. will begin to believe them because of how many people they have in their church. Yes, sir. You better hear me in here. Yes, sir. People will begin to believe that they are real just because of how much money and how successful. Or however we uh, measure success in their ministry. But take heed, child of God. Don't be deceived. Yeah. Take heed, child of God. Be careful who you are listening to. Be careful what it was. Be careful because you may find yourself deceived. All right, Pastor, I get it. But now I need you to help me. How can, what is the identity of the Antichrist? Or, or of Antichrist? Here it is, verse 19. I'm trying to move fast. John says, they went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that it might become plain that they all are not of us. Pastor, what is the identity of the Antichrist? Well, here's the hard part. Here's the part you're not going to like. They look like you and me. Yes, sir. John says, they went out from us. What does that mean? They were here. This is rough. Now, let me be clear. Let me give you background information because you have to understand this is this is kind of hard for John because John taught these men. Yeah. They were under John's tutelage. Yeah. John, watch me. Watch me. These are the men that gave communion. Yes, sir. Help me, man. These men baptized folks. Yes. These women, they taught Bible study. Yeah. And John has John said what happened was these men during that time were doing revivals for Big Wheel Day. They going out and they doing ten revivals. And John says, I gotta put a, a APP post. Yes, sir. I gotta let everybody know they were of us, but they ain't no more. Yeah. Because if you hear them, you are gonna think it's me. So John says, ah, 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 ah. they ain't with us no more. Mm. Now I, I hate to say this, but notice the, the distinction. Yeah. John says, no, I have to plainly tell you, they not with us no more. Yeah. I have to separate myself. We don't like that word separation in the church because it sounds hard. But sometimes you got to tell people I'm not with them no more. Right, yeah, right. Because the way they walk is not what's written here. I can't follow that teaching no more. Why? Because what the way that they talk is not in here. Yes, sir. Can I be honest with you? Your pastor is very trying to his best 
to be very selective of who comes in here. Yes, sir. And when I mean in here, I mean in here. Why? Because I don't want no false doctrine coming out of this. Ooh. That's right. All right. Come on. John had, I just ain't in my notes. Let me say this real quick. John had a responsibility to let people know I'm not with them. Yeah. And let it be clear, your past ain't with everybody. Come on. Right. I'm going to move on. That's just for us. That's for us. But anyway, John had to let them know. And so John said, listen, they ain't with me no more. They, they're, they're not with us. And, and, and John says, I have to let y'all know that they're, they're not with us. And they may look like us. They may sound like us, but they're not of us. Hear me, what's the warning? Be careful because everybody who claims to be a Christian ain't one. Yeah. Yeah. I know, and watch me, watch me. I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to move fast. Watch this. Because you must understand that every preacher or teacher has a spirit behind it. Every preacher and teacher, you right now, I am I, here I am, I am a preacher by God's grace and mercy. I'm a pastor by God's grace and mercy. And the power and the pre and the way I am being empowered is by the Holy Spirit. Yeah, right. By God's grace and mercy. That's the only way I'm able to do this every week. Point blank period. But 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 if they are not led by the, the spirit of the, the, the Holy Spirit, then what else is empowering them? Mm. The spirit of the Antichrist. Yeah, right. If you are not being, so a, a preacher pastor is being, powered, is being empowered by something. And if it ain't the Holy Spirit, then what else could it be? Watch, what's my point? We are not to look at people. Hear me, church? I, 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 if, I, if you will, I, I'm asking that by the power of God and by the, by the word of God that we up, up our standards. We do not look at preachers and teachers and say just because he has a big following, that means he's speaking the truth. Yeah. No, we must up our bed, Dad. We, yeah. we, must, we must say, I'm sorry, just because you, they call you bishop, don't mean that, I'm, that you are one. All right. All right. I got to vet you, bro. Not for, not for anybody else, but for me. Why? Because just because you say you're a Christian doesn't mean you are. You must understand, these men confess to be saved. Be, be saved. They confess Jesus as Lord. John says, uh 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 They were of us. And they may look like us, but that don't mean they are of yes. us. Watch this. But then, Pastor, we understand their identity, but how do we identify them? Mm. It ain't hard. It's, now, this is going to sound weird, but how do we identify them? John says, time will tell. Time will tell. Time will tell. See, watch this. They confessed Jesus in the beginning. But John said, if they were of us, they'd still be with us. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, are y'all with me? Yeah. I'm, I'm going to try and preach this. I'm trying to move quick. But, but John said, they'd still be with us. Watch this. Perseverance is proof. Of confession. They confess Jesus. Yeah, that's good, but watch me. But the perseverance of the way that they live their lives, the way that they preach their gospel, the way that they preach, that's going to be the evidence of what they first confess. Yes, right. I know you confess Jesus as Savior. Yes, that's how we obtain salvation. But perseverance is proof that your confession was real. Right. Are you hearing me? Does that make sense? So you must understand, perseverance is, watch me, what do you say? But my point is this, uh, 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 John says it this way, eventually it'll come to life. It'll come to life. You, you, the, the false preachers, the false teachers, thank you, Holy Spirit, it, it will come to life. You, you're going to see it. Now watch me, watch me. What's the application here, Pastor? I'm going to say this and you're not going to like it, but let me tell you this. Stop. This is not a license to, to, to do a witch hunt. Yo, I got to say this, I got to say this. Because I know some of us will get online and say, oh, let me look them up. You're going to look for the path. You're going to look for that. Oh, that's a false prophet. That's a false prophet. Put it on Facebook. He's a false prophet. God says, stop, stop, stop it. Stop looking for it. It will show itself by itself. That's right. That's right. John says, it'll come to light. Listen, can I, can, I, can, I, can I go deeper with this? I'm going to go deeper with this. Stop looking at conspiracy theories too. Y'all y'all stop that. Stop looking at conspiracy theories because we are so busy looking for the lie and if we were actually taking the time to look for the truth as much as we look for the lie, we would already see who was a liar. That's right, that's right. If you took the time to act to the same time you want to look up the conspiracy theories and go down all these rabbit holes, you would know the truth already. Listen, hear you the word of the Lord. Stop. 
<laughs> Stop looking at these conspiracy theories. Stop looking for false teachers and preachers because God says, uh, John says, they will reveal themselves. Yes, they're going to come out. Now, all you got to do, you're going to hear me say this later, all you got to do is say, say in the book. Yeah. Yeah. You'll see. Say in the book. Pastor, give me, give me, well, well, what are some good, what are, what are, uh, 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 a cheat code? John gives us a cheat code. How do we know they're false prophets? Here it is, verse 22 to 23. I got to skip around a little bit. Verse 22, 23. Watch what he says. Who is the liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? Mm -hmm. This is the Antichrist. He who denies the Father and the Son. No one who denies the Son has the Father. Whoever confesses the Son has the Father also. Let me, let me just say this very briefly and try and move this quick. Pastor, how do we know there are false teachers if they say Jesus is in God? Yeah. Like simple. Simple. Yeah. It's not hard. If they are saying Jesus is not God, then, then, then you need to say, I'm leaving. The end. Now, Pastor, why is that so important? Here, I, there are a plethora of reasons I can give you why it's so important that Jesus is God. But let me give you one. If Jesus was just a man, let the church say just a man, just a man. then he would be accountable for himself. What do you mean? When, when we go to heaven, well, we say it this way. I can't die for your sins. And you can't die for mine. But when we all go to the judgment seat, God's going to say, Christian Lawrence Covington. I'm gonna, he's going to talk to me. He ain't going to talk to you, you know, behalf of me. He's not going to talk to my daddy. He's not going to talk to my mom. My whole family here. Me, he's not going to talk to my brother. He's going to talk to who? Me. I am accountable for myself. As a, I, I, as a man, I can only account for myself. But because Jesus is God, yeah. only Jesus can account for everybody else. All right. All right. If Jesus was just a man, then he would only be accountable for himself. Let me put it to you this way. And then we go to the bank and say, I'm going to pay his bill. Well, you broke too. <laughs> you can't pay my bill if you ain't got no money either. Right. So you can't put, I'm going to put it on my account. It's not going to do no better. <laughs> you broke too. <laughs> Sorry, that was funny. It, it don't make no difference. What's my point? He had to be God. Yeah. Because that's the only way that all sins can be paid for. If you take the deity of Jesus, take away the deity. You have taken away salvation from humanity. Yes. Yes. Am I making sense? Right. Jesus has got to be God. And it ain't it true because why? He lived, he was born of a virgin. He was he lived a sickness life and he died on the cross for you and me. Only Jesus could do that. And the only way that Jesus could do that is because he's God. That's right, right. That's number one. But watch this, number two. Jesus. Is God, but watch this. Where, 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 where do we find another false prophet? When, when people claim they have God without Jesus. Look at verse 24. Let what you, I'm sorry, not 24, 23. The, no one who denies the Son has the Father. Let me, let me, let me cut through the grass a little bit because, again, I got a lot of notes and I'm trying to move fast so I don't be here forever. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to probably expose some of y'all friends, right? Because we all got those friends that are like this. You know you got friends that say, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a Christian, but I'm spiritual. Oh. It's, like, it's like a punch in the stomach every time I hear it. I'm spiritual. They say it like that too. I'm spiritual. I'm just, I know about all the spirit. And in my mind, I'm like, well, what spirit are you entertaining? All right. All right. I just told you. You are either moving by the Holy Spirit or some other spirit. But when people just say, I'm, sp I'm, just, I'm spiritual. You're spiritual? What is it? Watch me. Because what are they claiming? They say, I know God. How do you know God without Jesus? That's right. Watch me. Because it's impossible for you to know God without Jesus. That's right, right. Amen. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. What? So you got, you got a VIP pastor that I don't know about? How did you get to God and not get to Without Jesus. You can't talk to God without Jesus. You can't be saved to get to God without Jesus. You can't be a Christian without Jesus. So when you remove Jesus from the party, I'm sorry, you did not get to God. You got to somebody else. That's right, right. That's right, right. Anybody who's saying, I know God, what about Jesus? I don't know him, then you don't know God. And if you are around someone, 
someone who's claiming to know God but have denied or dismissed Jesus, again, you have a false prophet, false preacher, false teacher. Run the other way. Are y'all with me? I'm moving on. So we've identified, we, 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 the identity of the Antichrist, people that look like that are within the church are, are uh, to deceive uh, bishops, preachers, whatever the case may be. But then, but then we identify them. How do we identify them? We identify them because they say Jesus is a God and because they, uh, because they try to have God without Jesus. But now, here it is. Now, what, 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 how do we keep from being deceived? Watch what John says in verse 20. Here it is. And I want you to take this on because I was actually excited when I, when I read this. But you have been anointed. I like that. Let the church say, I'm anointed. I'm anointed. Uh, now, I'm going to say this because some of y'all will agree. For the longest of time, I grew up, I really did, Brother Quran. I grew up believing that, by, Dad, you know, we always used to sing, the anointing makes a difference. Yeah. And I always used to wonder, I always used to think, when I was a kid, I heard the anointing makes a difference. So I just assumed in my mind that the anointing one went to certain people. Uh, and, 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 and you don't have to say amen. I'm going to say it for you because I know some of you thought the same thing. That, that, that only certain people were anointed. But when I read this, and I already knew it before, but I was reminded that when you give your life to Christ, we're all. Yes, sir. Yeah. What does that mean? Watch this. Everybody in here got oil on. Yes, sir. Hey. Yes, sir. What are we anointed with? He said, you are anointed by the Holy One, meaning that you are anointed with the Holy Spirit. Come on. Watch me. Now, during that time, watch this. The anointing back when, it was, uh, they would take oil, they would uh, pour it on the priest, would pour it on top of the king, and they would say, this king is a representative of God. This man is going to do it. And they, when they anointed the king, it was a way of saying, this man is going to go to God on our behalf every single time. That's what it meant to be anointed. But now when you and I are anointed today, it means the same thing. We are representatives of God. But what is the anointing? It is the seal of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Say it again. I am, I am anointed. That means everybody in here is anointed. Yes. Upon salvation, we were all anointed. First, let me give you scripture to back it up so you don't think it's just me. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21 through 22. And it is God who establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us. And has anointed us and who has also put his seal on us and given us his spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. But uh, again, you are anointed. Right. And when you have the Holy Spirit, and you do, and you are anointed, that the Holy Spirit gives you discernment. Yes. Right. What does that mean? Here it means. It means two things. It means I'm able to tell the lie and I'm able to know the truth. Come on, right? I'm able to tell, see the lie and I'm able to know the truth. He gives you discernment. You know what the Holy Spirit is in you. Now, mind you, we're going to get to the truth because you need the word of God. But the Holy Spirit, when something is false, the Holy Spirit is going to say, hey, 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 uh-uh, something ain't right. Something, let me give you a better example. This pastor wrote preaches. I'm going to take this from you. I copyrighted it. But, 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 uh, 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 and I kind of twisted it. But uh, uh, me and my brother, we, uh, <laughs> we were watching the show that I'm sure you watched it. Uh, to catch a smuggler. You ever seen that show, To Catch a Smuggler? To Catch a Smuggler. They, 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 uh, they, uh, they. It's a, it's a show, Sister Virginia, where they try and import drugs into their country. Yeah. And and you have these airports uh, police officers. <laughs> it's not funny, but it is. Who, who, who watch them and they look uh, uh, suspicious and they say, oh, "Excuse me, can you come over here?" And you wouldn't believe. The stuff that they put it in their shoes, they put it in the bottom of their shoe. I've seen, we've seen it lying in their coat. It's crazy. But 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 the, but the, but the police officers are trained. Yes, help me to see and be suspicious. And they say, whoa, 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 whoa. you come over here. Where, where are you from? Where are you going? How long are you going to be here? How much money you got? And they pull them in the back and they say, let's search through your stuff. What are you saying, Pastor? See, the Holy Spirit is like a TSA agent. He says, hey. Jesus that don't line up. Come here, come here, come here, come here. Come over to the side, preacher. I don't know who you are, but we're going to have to go through the stuff. we got to get to the book because what you're saying ain't lining up. And the Holy, the Holy Spirit is a TSA. Hey, hey, hey. You said something about Allah. I don't know about that. I'm looking in the book. It ain't here. you got to move to the side. You can't get entry in here. Why? Because the Holy Spirit gives you discernment. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Am I making sense? Yes, sir. Now, uh, 
All right, I, I, I got to go here. Thank you, Lord. I do, I do. Can I continue with this anointing point? Yes. Watch this. Let me throw this real quick, real quick, real quick. Go with me. Go to verse 26. Look at verse 26. Is. I got to hurry because I, I don't want to take too much time. Verse 26, look what it says. I write these things to you about those who are trying to deceive you. Watch this. But the anointing that you receive from him abides in you. Watch this. And you have no need. That anyone teaches you. Stop right there. Stop right there. Stop right there. Actually, no, keep going. But as his anointing teaches you about everything. Stop right there. That's still right there. Now, I want you to understand. The text clearly says, it looks like he says that you don't need a teacher because you have the Holy Ghost. That's not what he's saying. Pastor, how is it that how is it that doesn't make sense? That's exactly what he's saying. Well, if that be the case, he wouldn't have wrote this letter to the church. Why is he writing the letter to the church saying, hey, don't be deceived if they all got the Holy Ghost and they would just they would just not be deceived? No, clearly they need a teacher. But here's what is happening. We need background context. So the church say content. What is happening? Back when these false preachers and teachers are saying, hey, I got information that your preachers don't have. Uh -huh. That's right. I know something that they don't know. They preaching all that good. They preaching all that Jesus stuff. I got enlightenment personally from God. And if you want to know, you come over here to me. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. They are literally saying, I, 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 got, I got the juice. <laughs> and, and the preachers in the preachers that are talking about Jesus don't have the juice. If you want to know the true ways of God, follow me. Because he gave it to me, yes. not them. Yes. Let, me, let me throw this in here real quick. You are anointed to know Jesus for yourself. Amen. Watch this. No one person in the body of Christ knows something that the rest of the body doesn't know. Mm -hmm. right. Let me say it one more time. No one person in the body of Christ knows something that the rest of the body doesn't know. What's my point? No pastor, no bishop, no preacher, no prophet, no evangelist, no teacher has a special understanding of God that was not given to the rest of the body of Christ. And if anyone is claiming that you need their ministry to know what the true gospel is, then you need to run the other way. Yes, sir. No pastor should say, I know everything, and if you leave me, you need Jesus. No, that's wrong. I tell people all the time, I pray you go to union, but if you don't go to union, go to find another church that preaches Jesus. Yes, sir. And as long as you preach Jesus, I'm fine. I'll meet you on the other side, but I want you to preach Jesus. But if a pastor says, if you leave this ministry, you have left Christianity, or if you leave this ministry, you have left the true teachings of Jesus Christ, you have yourself a false prophet. Yes, sir. And you have the Holy Spirit to discern. You have the word of God. Yes, you have preachers. Yes, you have teachers. But you have the Holy Spirit to discern for yourself and understand the word of God for yourself. Yes, sir. You don't need to go to anybody in order for it or one person in order to understand everything. Yes, sir. Am I making sense? Yes, Just want to throw that in. Okay, I'm moving on. Watch now, take me back to verse 20. Let's go back to verse 20. You have been anointed by the Holy Lord, and watch what he says. You all have what? Knowledge. Can I, can I just cut across the grass? John said, watch this. He says, you already have the truth. Yes. I don't have to go any further. He says, you already have the truth. See, the, see here's the problem that we face. A lot of us think, uh, we, we, the, the, the way that the enemy tempts us, the way that the spirit of the Antichrist tempts us, is he says, uh, he says um, 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 the Lord is holding back on you, on information. See, you got this book, you got this book, but there's more to this book. Mm. And the spirit of the Antichrist will say, no, 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 I know this 66 books is good, but you need to go to somewhere else. Because there's more somewhere else. And, and, and John is saying, stop, stop going with any new teaching. Stop following all these other things. Stop listening to what people are saying. Because why? You already have the truth. You, 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 you already have the truth. Watch me. And, 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 and here's the thing. And, and, and let me, let me, let me say it this way. Let me go this way. We're living in a time no different than back when, in this last hour, that people are beginning to question the word of God. Yes. Watch me. And or, and, and, and or if we have everything in God's word. And I've said this multiple times. I believe it's a matter of trust. Do, watch me. Do you trust that God has given you everything in his word? Watch me. Do, do you trust it? Because here's what's going to happen. If you don't trust that God has given you everything in his word, then you will question that God, you will question everything that God has given in his word. 
Let me say it again. I'm almost done. If you don't trust that God has given you everything in his word, then you will question everything that God has given in his word. You don't believe me. There's only one person that I can go to. Come here, Eve. Tell me to preach my, my message. Eve will tell you that I was deceived. Yes. In the Garden of Eden, in Genesis chapter 3, verse 1 through 5, what did Satan say? Satan said, did God actually say you can eat of the tree, uh, you can, you shall uh, eat of any tree of the garden. But watch, watch verse 4. Watch what Satan says in Genesis. He says, you will not surely die, verse 5, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be open. What does that mean? God, Satan says, Satan says, you need to eat of the tree because God is holding back on you. Satan says, you need to, wow, I'm going to get in trouble. You need to look in the book of uh, the, the, the Quran because God is holding out on you. Yes. Y'all not going to talk to me. You, you need to check out the book of Enoch. Why? Because God is holding out on you. Right. But God said, but here's what John is saying. No, don't be fooled. Don't be deceived. You have everything you need. Yes, sir. You don't need to go nowhere. You don't need to ask nobody. You don't need, watch me. You don't need to go to other religions to find out about Jesus. Yeah, yeah. It's all right here. All you need is in the book. And we have to trust and believe. And there's evidence behind it that God has given us everything that we need. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you hearing me? You have everything you need. And you've got to trust that God has given us. And God, hear me, God has not held out on you. God has not shortened his, God has not held out on you. God has not uh, 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 hidden things from you. God wants you to know the truth. You have everything you need. Let the church say amen. amen. I'm done. Final point. Thank you for bearing with me. I know it was a lot. Watch this. Now, John says in this last hour, many antichrists will come and they will attempt to deceive you. But by God's grace, you have everything you need to stand against their deceptions. You have the Holy Spirit to discern. You have the word, the, the truth of God's word to study. There is only one thing that you need to do. There's one thing that, that, that you need to do. Because you have the Holy Spirit, you have the truth. But there's one thing you need to do. You need to abide. Mm. Look at verse 24 and 26. I'm not your way. And I want you to hear the consistency of it. Let what you heard from the beginning abide in you. And what you heard from the beginning abides in you, that you too will abide in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he made to us, uh, eternal life. Uh, go down to verse 27. But the anointing that you receive from him abides in you. And you have no one need that, you have no need that anyone should teach you, but as his anointing teaches you about everything, and it's true, and it's no lie, just as it has taught you, abide in him. What does he say? Abide, abide, abide. What is that word abide mean? It means stay. Yes. Remain. Yes. Point blank. I'm done, church. Remain in the word of God. Yes. Because if you remain, John says very easy, he says in verse 20, verse uh, 26, I'm sorry, verse 24 down, if you abide in the word, you will stay in the Lord. Yeah. Stay in the Lord. Stay in the Lord. That same word abide is the same word, Greek word that's used in verse 19 when he says they did not continue with us. Meaning they did not stay with us because they did not remain in the word. When the world, listen to me, when the world is deceiving you and attempting to deceive you, God says you only have to do one thing. Watch me. You don't need to go find the false prophets. You don't need to go find the false teachers. You don't need to look for anybody. You don't need to look for the lies. You need to do one thing. Stay in the word. Yes. Stay in the word. Don't, don't, don't look to the left. Don't look to the right. Stay in the word. And if you stay in the word, you'll see the light. Yes. If you stay in the word, you'll understand the truth. He says, oh, abide. And you notice the, the uh, repetitiveness. He says over and over again, stay in the word. Stay in the word. Stay in the word. Not just Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. You keep, you stay in the word. Yes. Can I, can, I, can I say one more thing? Yes. And then I'm done. I'm done. Help me, Holy Spirit. Can you go, if you go back to verse 9. Mm. I'm sorry, verse 19. Excuse me. You go back to verse 19. Uh -huh. John says, uh, verse 19. John, John says, they left us. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. Yes. Hear me, child of God. That word, he, he, I said this before. I said this before for the Antichrist. If they were really of us, 
they would have stayed. They would have watched this persevere. Yes. Can I encourage you? Persevere. Yes. Don't, don't get comfortable in your stagnant, stagnant Christianity. Because here's my point. Because John says over and over again, remain, 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 remain. But, but, the, but the fear is if we find ourselves getting lazy, we may find ourselves discontinuing. Hear me, hear me. John says, per persevere. Keep going. Keep pushing. Keep going. Because if you don't keep going, you may find yourself backsliding. Yes. Listen to me. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me finish with this. I'm going to finish with this. I praise God. They're here right on time. I'm done. Let me finish with this. My grandmother has been a nurse uh, all my life. In truth, I have... Uh, in truth, I have two doctors. I have my actual doctor and my grandmother. My grandmother is my doctor. Uh, I have a primary doctor and then my grandmother. I go to my grandmother first, so we don't have to do co-pays. And 10 times out of 10, 11 times out of 10, she's right. Y'all know how that works. Everybody should have somebody in their family. Mine is my grandma. Amen. She's been taking care of me for a mighty long time. But my, oh, this one time, y'all, one time, Sister Celeste, I was sick. I was sick as a dog. And um, I was in the bed for a long time. And uh, my grandma asked for you, and she called up on us, and she said, how you feeling? How's, he, well, how's Chris doing? Chris has been in the bed. She, she's been in the bed for a real long time. He's just feeling weak. He's feeling bad. Uh, and uh, she said, how long you been in the bed? He only gets up to go to the bathroom. That's it. He's just been in the bed. She said, get him out the bed. I said, she said, what? She said, mom said, get him. My grandma said, get him out the bed. She said, why? She said, because if he stays in the bed, his body will think he needs to stay there. Yeah. Yeah. Watch me. Don't get comfortable in your stagnant walk with Christ. Because after a while, your spirit will begin to think that you need to stay. Hear me, hear me. I'm not talking about missing church. I'm not talking about missing church because you got to go to work. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about you are comfortable when you get comfortable that you didn't read your Bible today. Yes, sir. You've grown stagnant. And if you keep doing that, you will continue. You will sit down. You're going to stay in that bed if you don't get up. Yes. Are you hearing me? I'm talking about you are fine with not praying today and you don't miss a beat. No, 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 no. You need to get up out the bed. Yes, Why? Because look at verse 19. He said, they would have stayed with us if they continued. Yes. And the moment that they, and, and you, and obviously this didn't happen overnight, but it slowed down. It's a slow leap. One day after another. I didn't read my Bible today. I didn't go to church today. I didn't pray. That's all right. All right, that's one week. But one week will turn to three months real quick. Yes, and you are comfortable in that chair, not thinking about church. And all of a sudden now you're saying, I don't want nothing to do with Jesus because you stopped. John says, remain, abide, continue. The word of God so that you will can persevere. Because watch this, I'm done. Because life has a way. I'm back to life now. Because life will shake your faith. Life will shake your faith. People will make watch me. People will make you question your relationship with God. Situations will make you question your relationship with God. And if you are not already in the word. And you don't have any word, any verses to help you, yes. of course you're gonna to want to say, I don't know about this, because you weren't in it in the first place. Right. And the way that the way that life will knock you down, you best believe, stay in it. If you stay ready, you ain't gotta get ready. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Remain in the word of God. How do we go against the spirit of the Antichrist? We stay in the word. We stay, we stay in the Word. We stay praying up. We stay preaching and teaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Stay in the Word, child of God. I'm not saying you got to come to everything that union has. I'm saying for your personal self, don't you go a day without devotion. Yeah, don't you go a day without prayer. I don't care if it's a quick one, five minutes before you walk in the door. You need something. Amen. And if you don't have it, you may find yourself discontinued. Mm. You want to continue. Abide in the Word of God. And you will and you will be able to deny the lies of the enemy. Thank you for young God bless you. For listening to the word, we're praying that the word of God edified you. If you have not received Jesus Christ as your savior, uh, we want to invite you. We want to invite you to know Christ as your savior. A couple of things that we need to do here is simple: is that uh, you need we need to confess our sins, uh, uh, confess and say, Lord, I have sinned in my life. 
and I need that sin removed. And the only way that that sin can be removed is when we confess that Jesus is Lord, that he died for our sins, and he was resurrected and is seated at the right hand of the Father. So you simply just need to say, Lord, I have sins. Forgive me for those sins. I receive you as Savior, and I believe by faith that you are Lord and that you are the Lord of my life, and you have redeemed me from my sins. And just like that, you have salvation. Just like that, you know the Lord for yourself. Uh, one thing that we've learned, uh, and, and we know at Union here at our church, uh, uh, we would uh, uh, we would love for you to be a part of our church. But at the same time, um, if you wish to go to another church or you want uh, uh, know someone else, that's fine too. But one thing is certain, and, and, uh, you don't have to be here to be saved. Uh, you know the Lord for yourself. So uh, if you have any uh, questions or concerns, I would uh, advise you to go to our email. Uh, our email is unionbaptist.southriverNJ at gmail.com. That's unionbaptist.southriverNJ at gmail.com. If you have any questions, concerns, or if you just, uh, uh, even during this pandemic, you want to reach out and say, I want to be a part of this great church, you can do that as well. And we will contact, be in contact with you, and uh, we'll give you information on how to join the church and whatnot. Amen. I pray all is well with you. Uh, grace and peace.